I'll tell you, it's a wonder we haven't had to call an ambulance for Tristan. That boy is hurt more. Maybe he just had one. I think that's what the deal is. Uh, I tell you, just uh, always hurt every time you see him, he's limping. And uh, yeah, we're just, we've got a lot of whiners around here this week. There's a few winners and a lot of whiners. Yeah. And, uh, we've had fun. We've had a lot of injuries. Brother Carlos went rolling across the front today. Yes, he did. And, uh, I've got the video to prove it. You want to see it? But uh, I tell you, we've had fun out of them. Oh, yeah. But uh, my voice feels about like some of your bodies. So I'm going to need you to help me tonight. But I need the Lord to touch me most of all. Amen. I want to see the Lord move in this altar call tonight. Amen. You got your Bibles with you? I hope you do. Amen. Joshua chapter number three. Joshua chapter number three. I need the Lord to help me. Amen. Joshua chapter three. Very familiar scripture here. I'm going to try to preach to you. And I really, I tried to pass this off to of Brother Isaacs. Uh, I like to do something in basketball that most of y'all don't. I like to pass. Come on. Well, you wouldn't accept it. So, uh, man, I need the Lord to touch me tonight. Joshua chapter 3, verse number 1. Stand for the reading of God's word, if you would. Amen. The Bible said in Joshua rose early in the morning and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For ye have not passed this way before. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And it came to pass that when the people were removed from their tents, verse number 14, and it came to pass when the people were removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all of his banks at the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up, upon a heap very far from the city, Adam. That is besides Ayrton. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea fell and were cut off. And the people passed over against Jericho, right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground. Now, I love this last part until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. I love that phrase right there. Until all of the people were passed clean over Jordan. Amen. You may be seated tonight. I need the Lord to touch me as I try to preach to you. I want to preach on it's time to get over it. It's time to get over it. Amen. I, uh, I, I, I'm probably not a real good parent. Uh, we went to the lake one day a couple of years ago, about four years ago, I believe it was. Reese, my oldest one, was about five or six. And uh, he jumped off the boat. We pulled up to a little sand uh, bar there, and we was going was to jump out and swim there on that sandy beach at the lake. And uh, Reese jumped out, and he hollered. He said, Daddy, I hurt my foot. And you know what I said? Get over it. Come on. We came to swim. Get over it. And uh, he kept whining about it. So finally I put him on my back and swam out in deeper waters and let him swim around and put him on the tube and pulled him behind the boat and rode the jet ski. And later that day when we got out about 10 o'clock that night actually, we got out of the lake and I took his shoe off and uh, his foot was starting to swell. So I took him to the doctor that night on a Saturday night. They've done x-rays and come back in and said four of the five bones in your boy's foot's broke. 
And uh, I'm just, I, I must not be a very good dad. But uh, you know what my answer to his problem was? Get over it. Amen. And I know that sounds rough sometimes, but when the, the, the storms in, the, in your life that you are facing, I came to preach to you tonight, it's time to get over it. Amen. I said it's time to get over it. You're going to help me preach. Go back up on me now. Because of their unbelief, Israel had been sentenced to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And those years have now expired. The children of Israel was right at the, the threshold of going in to possess the promised land that God had given them. Yeah. They was right at the entrance of the promised land. And really, I feel like tonight that that's where a lot of young people are right here in the house. The Lord has helped. The Lord has ministered. The Lord has touched in these altars. And I feel like that you are right at the threshold floor. You are right at the threshold of getting into what God would have to give you. And then just one more river across, just one more obstacle in front of you, then you can have the promise that God has given you. I believe that's how close we are. God brought them to the Jordan River at the time of the harvest. The Bible said that it was now overflowing its banks as it did at the time of the harvest. So God didn't just bring them into a, a little trial, but God brought them up to the crossing of the Jordan at the most impossible looking time that there could be. It had swelled out of his banks. It was over a mile wide, we read. Amen. At the time of the swelling of the Jordan, some 50 times greater than what it normally was. But God brought them to it in order to bring them through it. And I'm telling you tonight, I believe God has brought you to the threshold of what has been holding you back, what has been keeping you from receiving the promise of the Holy Ghost. For Job prophesied and said in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh that your sons are going to prophesy. Your young men are going to have visions. Your old men are going to have dreams. And upon thy servants and upon thy handmaids will I pour out of my spirit. Then there's some of you that came seeking the Holy Ghost. Then there's some of you come. Hallelujah. Seeking the Holy Ghost. Brother Devin, you've been seeking every night. You've been trying your best. You've been pressing in. You've been trying to get through the river. Amen. Come on. Let's keep our minds together here. Let the Lord touch us. Amen. You've been doing everything you could. And then it seems like you've come up to the brink of the river. Don't you leave me now. Help me preach. Amen. You come up to the brink of the river. And it seems like there's no way that you can get over. And I'm telling you, if God brought you to it, God's going to take you through it. Amen. If you've come up against it, for the Bible said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. So God brought them unto the banks of the Jordan River. Amen. He said, I'm going to take you over to the other side. Amen. I'm going to take you across to the other side. Amen. There's something that we need to see here. God gave them a message to look at. God gave them something to examine. Amen. He challenged them when it came time for the people to move towards Jordan. God had a message that they needed to hear. Amen. The words, in the words that they heard, they were challenged to do everything that they could for God. God challenged them. He he said, I want you to watch the ark. He said, I want you to watch what my men do. I want you to watch what the priest does. In other words, I want you to test the waters and see what the Spirit of God is doing. And then I want to tell you in every one of our services, that's what we're doing. We're watching God. Amen. And when God moves, you move. Amen. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, that is the time for you to move. Amen. He said, you better watch him. Then, then you better follow God. Amen. I preach to my church back home. It don't matter if it's in the song service, if it's in testimony service, if it's in the middle of preaching, at the beginning of preaching, when God starts moving, you better move too. Amen. When the Holy Ghost begins to move, I don't dictate what God does, but I'm telling you, when God moves, I want to move with Him. When God goes, I want to go with Him. Amen. And then the prophet said this, he said, when the ark begins to move, 
He said, you don't get any closer than 2,000 cubits. Don't get any closer to the ark. You know what he was telling them? You better respect God. And I said, you better respect God. And I want to tell you, I believe we need a dose of the fear of God in this generation again. And I said, we need a dose of the fear of God because there's people while the Holy Ghost is moving, while God is blessing, I see people doing anything and everything except getting in. And I wonder where they learn it until I see mom and dad sometimes, amen, doing everything and anything except doing what God would have you to do. Amen, church is not the time to balance a checkbook. Church is not the time to have your cell phone out. I know it's against the law here. It's against the rules. But when you go back home, when you walk in the house of God, leave your cell phone in the car. Let me stay off Facebook in church. Stay off Instagram in church. Respect the house of God. For when God moves, I want to be ready to move with Him. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Well, praise God. I've watched. Hey man, I just got one boy here from my church. If I can push the mute, uh, push the mute button on him, tell him not to tell him when we get home, we'll be all right. And I'm telling you, brother Goins, I've watched. Hey man, as the Holy Ghost moved in our services, and, and you know the pastor ought to have the heartbeat of the church. He ought to. And, and there's been people that I have had a burden for, and I wanted God to touch them. And then the Holy Ghost will get to moving, and man, I'm excited. Surely they're pushing in. Surely they're going to come to the altar. And I look back, and then I see the glow of the screen on their face. And then I say they wouldn't know if God was anywhere within a thousand miles of them. Why? Because they have not honored the spirit and the moving of God. We must get back to where we reverence God's house. And I said we reverence the moving of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. God. Just make it a little tight on me right here, but that's all right. Amen. He said, sanctify yourselves. Amen. Joshua did not say that God was going to sanctify the earth. He said, you better sanctify yourself. God's fixing to do something for you. God's fixing to bring you over. God's fixing to perform a miracle. But before he does, Joshua said, sanctify yourselves. And I want to tell you, I preach to, I'm blue in the face. And people say, I don't see nothing wrong with it. They I don't see anything wrong with it. And so therefore, they will not stop it. And maybe you know what you're doing wrong. You don't have to have the preacher say, I'll have them say, well, it's not in the Bible. Now you're going to preach it. Amen. Well, you know when it's wrong. Amen. The precepts of God's Word let you know what's right and what's wrong. There's no gray area in the Bible. Bible, it's black and it's white. Amen. And I'm telling you, amen, you better get to the place that when God deals with your heart, amen, you sanctify yourself. And then, when you just know it's wrong, and God hadn't dealt with you, and nobody has preached on it, but you know it's wrong. Amen. Sanctify yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible not talk about doing that. Amen. About this untoward generation, what's the Bible say? Amen. It tells us to come out from among it ourselves. Amen. We ought to do it ourselves. Yeah. Amen. There's a lot of things some of y'all's doing. You know better than it. You know better than dressing like you're dressing. You know better than acting like you're acting. Amen. You know better than saying what you're saying. Sanctify yourself. Amen. God's not going to take the words out of your mouth. God's not going to take those clothes out of your closet. Sanctify yourself. If you want God to move, sanctify yourself. Hallelujah. I'm going to move on. But I went to youth pastor at a church about seven years ago. And then when I accepted the call to go there, at first when he asked me, I said, no, absolutely not. Amen. But then he came back six months later. And God had been dealing with me to go. He said, will you come and youth pastor for me? And I said, yes, sir, I will. The Lord's dealt with me. And you know what happened? Some of my preacher buddies sent word to me. They said he'll never be used again in holiness if he goes to that church. He'll never preach again in the holiness pulpits if he lines up with those people. Oh, Amen. Because they one time was holiness. 
but they had dropped away and they had went the way of the world and let me say in this they changed their standards in order to keep their young people and when I went there guess how many young people was there two they lost every one of their young people by doing what they thought would keep them. I would tell you, if you want to keep your young people, keep the Holy Ghost moving in your church. If you want to keep your youth group, make sure that revival is breaking out in your church. Don't lose your standard. Don't back up on what you believe. And then just get the Holy Ghost moving among them. Amen. Right. I went there. I stayed for a little over two years. And what people thought would break me and take me down and make me liberal. Actually, they just stirred it up the fence because you know what happened? I walked into a place where the Spirit of the Lord did not move anymore. Yeah, they lost their commitment to God yeah. and God quit moving among them. Come on. Sanctify yourself. Right. Amen. I said, Sanctify. Oh, this ain't going over very good. I'm going to move on. And I'm telling you, God's yeah. command to them was sanctify yourself. Yeah. Amen. And then commit to God. Amen. Give God a commitment. God was fixing to park the waters for them. God was fixing to do what they could not do. And can I say on the authority of God's word tonight, I believe God's getting ready to do something in this altar service that you can't do for yourself. There ain't no way that you can cross Jordan alone. But God's fixing to park the waters. And before he does that, why don't you just commit yourself to him and say, Lord, I'm in your hands. Sister Peretic said it uh, the best I've heard today when she said God's not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. Maybe that's what God's looking for is somebody that will commit and say no matter where I have to go, no matter what I have to do, I'm going to commit my life to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Lord has promised He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He said, I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. But my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. Amen. God is going to keep His end of the bargain. But we must commit to Him. I'm telling you, after we hear the message of God, though, we must look for God to do a miracle. And I said, we must look for God to do a miracle. Amen. This kids has already said there was a miracle on 34th Street. But wouldn't you like to say they met after tonight is over that right there in Winchester, Ohio that God gave us a miracle. And that's something I've been up against for years. Something I couldn't get past. Something I couldn't get over. But God pulled it out. God delivered me. God brought me over on the other side. And there was a problem that faced them. This river is 50 times wider than what it was. Amen. Amen. How in the world is God going to do it? Amen. But I'm telling you, every time there's a problem, God has a plan. Right. Amen. He said, I want the priest to go first. And when the soles of their feet hit the water, I'm going to do something you couldn't do for yourself. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And the Bible said, He told us the starting and the stopping place of the crossing. Amen. Where they crossed over Jordan. And it was over a mile wide. Amen. Where God parted the waters back. I've always seen a picture of where that group was stretched out as far as you can see. And then there was just a little area for them to go over. But in reality, when God does things, God does them right. God peeled the waters back far enough. Amen. That you could have walked across shoulder to shoulder just about. And then I want to tell you when God gets through. Amen. Bringing your giant down tonight. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to be a fight. Amen. But God's going to do it. And God's going to do it right. Amen. I said God's going to do it. And God's going to do it right. Amen. Psalm chapter 78 verse 19. Yea, they speak against God. They said can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God do the impossible? Can God give me what I thought I could never get? My answer is yes. 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 In this altar tonight, God can do what you said was impossible for God to do. Amen. Oh, I need the Lord to help me. Amen. This is what I came to preach to you right here. Amen. God brought them across the river. Amen. But then God told them to do something. Yeah. This is where I want to preach to you for a little while. Those that I asked to help me, would you get, get, get where you need to be? 
Amen. God said, this is what I want you to do. Amen. Where the priests are standing. He said, I want you to get a stone and put it upon your shoulder. Amen. You know what he was saying? We're fixing to erect a memorial around here. We're fixing to build something. Amen. God said, I want you to get a stone. And then I want you to put it upon your shoulder. Amen. He said, for when we get in the river, in the middle of the impossibility, I want you to build a memorial at the bottom of the river. Then then, when you get on the other side of the river, I want you to erect another memorial. They met 24 stones. They met each of them. 12 stones at each memorial. Y'all come on, help me. They met around here this week. I believe God has moved and God has touched. That somebody just picked up a stone. That is the promise of God. That God said, I'm going to do it for you. And here we have 12 individuals that got a stone. And as they walk through the river, they met build a memorial right here. They met this is where God helped us. This is where God brought us out. Go ahead, lay a rock down out there. Uh, you know what they're doing? They're saying at youth camp, 2015, God done something for me. God helped me. God blessed me. God gave me the Holy Ghost. God moved. And then they built a memorial in the middle of the river. But when they got to the other side, I feel like preaching now. When they got to the other side, God said, build another memorial. I want you to build this one up here, outside of the river. And then two memorials, one miracle, two, uh, two things to look back on, two trophies if you would, one miracle. Amen. And you know what he told them? He said, they said, what shall this be for? He said, I want you to have a place that you can point back and tell your children that's where God done it. That's where God delivered me. Let me preach to you just a minute. It was at a youth camp when I was 19 years old that God baptized me in the Holy Ghost and he called me to preach. And I want to tell you, I took my boys back there this year. Then I sat right there. It's where Daddy went through. The reason you have a godly home is right there. The reason Daddy's serving God is right there. Then there's a memorial here that some of you need to build in this youth camp to bring your children back years from now and say, at that youth camp, God done the impossible in my life. God done the impossible in my life. Amen. But why build one in the middle of the river? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Why build one at the bottom of the river? Amen. This is to remind you what God done. This is so you can bring your children and tell them God delivered me. But why build one in the bottom of the river? There's only one person can see that one. You can't go back and see it. There's only one person can see the memorial in the bottom of the river. You know who that is? God Almighty. Amen. He said, I want you to build one here to remind you of what I've done for you. But go ahead and build one in the bottom to remind me that when you was up against an impossibility, when it looked like the devil had your back in the corner, you didn't give up on me. Amen. You stayed with God. You stayed with Him. And I want to tell you, I don't have a soft story tonight, but I can tell you, I've had ample opportunity to turn around back. I've had plenty of reasons to turn around and give up on God and so have you. But you know what I've done? I've built a memorial to tell God I didn't give up on you. When the door got tough, amen, when my friends turned on me, when the world shunned me, amen, I didn't give up on God. And some of you are going back to homes that does not serve God. You're going back to mamas and daddies that don't serve God. Build a memorial. God, I stuck with you. God, I stayed with you. Amen. When it looked impossible, I stayed with God. Oh, hallelujah. Jill, give me a song. Amen. We're going to build some memorials around this altar tonight. Amen. Brother Tommy, God's done a lot. Amen. I said God's done a lot around here. Amen. I remember I wasn't here last year. I had a death in the church. I couldn't come. But two years ago, God done some things. Amen. I remember Sister Michaela praying through right over here two years ago. Anybody else remember that? Amen. I remember. Amen. Where you at? 
Where you at? You got a player? Hey, man. Brother Jared, where you at? Come on. I remember God touching him right over here. He met two years ago. Come on up here and help me. Hey, man, you know what happened? You built a memorial over here. Hey, man, I remember him talking about Brother Stephen was at your aunt. Hey, man, on a Thursday night. Prayed through right here. Already had a suicide letter wrote out. But God stopped the plans. There's memorials built all over this place. Will you help me for just a minute? Hey, man, will you help me? And all guys move back just a little bit. If God's done something for you this week, in this meeting, I want you to walk to the spot where God done it. Yeah. Hey, come on, help me. Scoot back, boys. Scoot back just a little bit or find your place. God done something for you. Hey, Amen. We're getting ready to have an altar service here. Hey, Amen. But if God has done something special, look at this. Look at this. Hey, Amen. You know what this is? This is a memorial building place right here. Hey, Amen. God's done something for you. God's giving you something. Come on, little girls. Hey, Amen. That's it. Let's get in here. This is a place where God has moved on you this week. Hey, Amen. You know what you need to do? You need to stand there and build a memorial because the enemy's going to come against you. The enemy's going to fight you. But when he does, say, devil, there's a place at Winchester that God brought me through. God brought me over and take him back to the memorial that God gave you. And then right where you're at, stretch your hands to heaven. Say, Lord, help me build a memorial. Help me build something right here, Lord. Amen. Come on, Jill, say when you can. Amen. Right here, God. This is where you've done the impossible. This is where you brought me over. This is where you brought me through. Amen. Turn your hands up to heaven. God, let me build a memorial so I can come back and say it was there that my life was changed. God, come on, everybody, the wheel. The rest of you, get in here.